A very good evening and welcome. You're watching the 7 o'clock news on CNC3. I'm Ria Rambali. Let's tell you what's making the news tonight. In the midst of a tragedy, friends and family of Otis Morrison are hailing him a hero. We'll tell you why. Health officials on alert as COVID hospitalizations on the rise again. Several suspected monkeypox samples sent for testing all returned negative. And increased tuition fees at the UE St. Augustine campus may have been shelved for now, but the new principal says it's an inevitable discussion for the institution's future. Good evening, I'm Ryan Beju. Here's what's coming up in sport. Elaine thompson Hera is crowned the new women's 100-meter champion as Michelle Lee Ayi leads a TNT exodus on the track. The adverse weather alert has been discontinued for Trinidad and Tobago, but that doesn't mean rainfall is finished with the country just yet. Join me, Clay Hussein, to find out why in tonight's weather forecast. Tributes are tonight pouring in for a young father who lost his life while trying to save a girl from drowning at Clifton Hill Beach on Monday. Otis Morrison's family says his love for children was so strong, he would never hesitate to risk his own life to ensure the survival of a young person. Our team of Jesse Ramdale and Ivan Tulsi spoke with Morrison's family for this report. Nothing spells family time like a day at the beach. And for 36-year-old family man Otis Morrison, the Emancipation Day holiday on Monday presented the ideal opportunity to share with loved ones. He was on holiday. Right. He was supposed to go back. I think Tuesday come and he was on six weeks holiday. So he wanted to spend most time with his family. So when they asked to go certain places, he would go. But he doesn't like to see that much. Christine Morrison said his son's heart was always with his children. She said the father of two would give anything for them. And on Monday, he gave his last breath for a young stranger while at Guapo Beach. I would have cried out and the wife was asleep. We can assist and help our child in some way. He's not the best swimmer, but he worked at the doing he have to learn to swim. So he asked us, so he went out there. I don't know, I wasn't there. But as his wife said, when he went out there, like apparently the girl was going. So he went out swimming and kept up, you know, that she would able to and hold her for a very long time and no. It is reported that the operators of a jet ski were alerted to the situation and were able to rescue the girl. Morrison, however, was not so fortunate. He only not charged for that length of time, you know. He was able to push on the jet ski that he was able to eat. And I told him, I cannot tell what happened after. But his wife says, after that, he went down. Otis's relatives claim after the incident, they have not heard from the girl's family. His wife of just two years, Keisha Lane, was too distraught to speak to CNC3 News. And it's right here at Morrison's workshop that he and his older brother would share some memories that will now last a lifetime. Family line. Family line, family out. Me and he move in. We up and work. You know, I make sure I show him the ropes, everything, I work, I think. But everything was good. Family was, and family was the best. Christine is now advocating that a lifeguard post be established at the Guapo Beach and is hopeful that her son did not lose his life in vain. Jesse Ramde, CNC 3 News. The Child Protection Unit is investigating an incident in which a 10-year-old boy was injured after reportedly jumping off an unfinished building in Carinage. The incident occurred around 5.50 p.m. yesterday at Upper Lance Mitan Road. The child's mother reported that they had just arrived home when the victim and his 12-year-old brother both went onto the roof to play when he reportedly jumped off. A retired medical practitioner who lives nearby was alerted and rendered assistance until the emergency health services arrived. Tests performed at the Mount Hope Children's Hospital on Tuesday revealed the victim sustained a swollen left ankle and was experiencing severe back pains. No signs of head trauma were reported at the time. Corporal Davis Guerra of the Child Protection Unit is continuing inquiries. Police are continuing their inquiries into an attempted murder-suicide in San Fernando where a mother tried to take her life and that of her daughters. On Saturday, the child's father found his wife and his six-year-old daughter unresponsive at their home. They were taken by ambulance to the San Fernando General Hospital where they remain in a stable condition. 
Confirmation tonight that COVID-19 hospitalizations are on the rise. That's according to Principal Medical Officer Dr. Miriam Abdul-Richards. She says more people are becoming severely ill and require hospitalization. And she revealed the number of people being warded began increasing last week. On the 13th of July, 2022, we noticed the increase in the rolling average of confirmed cases. Then on the 23rd of July, 2022, we noticed the accident and emergency admissions increasing. And of course, by the 28th of July, 2022, the hospital occupancy began to increase. Chief Medical Officer Dr. Roshan Parstram says, Two children are among those currently hospitalized with COVID-19. He says as of last week, the BA5 subvariant of Omicron is the dominant strain circulating in the country. The last week's report now show, of course, um, BA5 still the dominant variant in the country, a dominant sublineage at 53.2% of the samples and BA4 accounting for 26%. The remaining samples are BA1 and BA2. It's why health officials are urging people to get vaccinated and adhere to all public health guidelines. Eight samples were tested for monkeypox and they've all returned with negative results. And according to the health minister, there are no more pending samples. Minister Terence Dialsing says TNT is yet to make progress in acquiring monkeypox vaccines. He says 2,000 doses were ordered through PAHO to vaccinate 1,000 people. We have no firm date of arrival as yet, as soon as we have it. Of course, we will let you know. We have no firm confirmation of pricing as yet, but we have placed an order, a very early order. Trinidad and Tobago was one of the first countries to place the order with PAHO. He says only primary contacts of monkeypox cases will be inoculated. Dial Singh does not believe, given current data, that TNT will see any large number of cases. Welcome back. The new principal of the University of the West Indies St. Augustine campus, Professor Rosemary Bell Antoine, says she is concerned about a high education gap between the rich and the poor. Joel Julian and cameraman Gary Vincent sat down for an exclusive interview with the new pro vice chancellor for this report. Last month, students attending the University of the West Indies St. Augustine campus had reason to celebrate following the announcement that the campus will not be raising fees this year. But its new principal, Rosemary Bell Antoine, says a discussion about raising fees at the institution is inevitable. And there's one thing in particular that Bell Antoine says bothers her about this. I would always be concerned that it's not just the rich that will have an education. I really don't want to see that, and certainly not under my watch that only rich people can go to UE. Bell Antoine says with government having cut its subvention to the university, something has to give. Apart from the issue of the possibility of rising costs, Bell Antoine says security for the students and staff remains front of mind. That is front and center um, in, in the campus, but we have made important strides and we've spared no expense. Bell Antoine officially assumed office on August 1st. She succeeds Professor Brian Copeland, who proceeded on retirement on July 31st. Joel Julian, CNC3 News. And Professor Rosemary Bell Antoine also responded to claims made by a group of law students that the UE is responsible for them missing the July 31st deadline for enrollment into the Hugh Wooding Law School. The students claimed that the UE failed to give them their respective transcripts and certificates. Bell Antoine described the claims as fake news. Over the weekend, Guardian Media was contacted by several affected law students and parents who said the situation has brought undue stress and frustration on them. Bell Antoine said the deadline for enrollment into the law school is on August 31st. In tonight's Business Watch, Atlantic LNG has taken a historic step as it has joined the International Association of Oil and Gas Producers, while Touchstone has given notice to residents that work on the Coho gas facility is set to begin. Peter Christopher reports. The following Business Watch feature is brought to you by Visa, everywhere you want to be.
LNG producer Atlantic has joined the International Association of Oil and Gas Producers. In the process, Atlantic has become the world's first large-scale LNG producer to join. Atlantic Chief Executive Officer Ron Adams says this new membership and milestone achievement will aid the company's pursuit of sustained world-class operations and the crucial role it continues to play in the energy transition. He says this membership is directly aligned to our wider strategic roadmap and will help us continue achieving the operational requirements brought about by increasing global demand for cleaner energy sources including natural gas. He adds, our continued success in building sustained world-class operations helps to create value across Trinidad and Tobago, and this membership will further enable us to align our key systems for those that are best in class and embedded in all world-class organizations. The Coho Gas Pipeline will commence pre-commissioning and commissioning operations Touchstone Exploration has announced. The company has given notice to residents in the community in accordance to the Coho Certification of Environmental Clearance. As part of the CEC, residential notification is required to be made a minimum of five business days before operations begin. Paul Bay, Touchstone President and Chief Executive Officer says, the completion of the Coho facility and pipeline will be a significant milestone for Touchstone as it will represent our first natural gas production and is expected to double our current production on a BOE basis. Coho 1 will commence production following completion of the commissioning and pipeline handover with the expectation that production will increase over time. The Coho area is located in the Ottawa block where Touchstone has an 80% operating working interest and Heritage Petroleum Company Limited holds the remaining 20%. Peter Christopher, CNT3 Business Watch. The preceding Business Watch feature was brought to you by Visa. Everywhere you want to be. Two police officers slapped with seven charges of misbehavior in public office have been granted a total of $3.6 million bail. 27-year-old Ronald Ransom and 36-year-old Rishi Mohan are accused of soliciting $700,000 from a man to forego prosecution in a criminal investigation. Both officers were subsequently arrested and charged. They were each granted bail in the sum of $1,800,000 with surety to cover all charges. The men will reappear in court later on next month. A million dollars worth of steel is discovered by police in a scrapyard in Shaguanas. The items were stolen from the licensing authority. Scrap Iron Dealers Association President Alan Ferguson said the yard involved in the crime was managed by foreigners and only became a member of the association last week. He added that the Ministry of Trade and Industry can tell who is exporting copper and they can move to have wrongdoers punished. Otto Carrington tells us more. Money laundering and illegal activities continue to plague the scrap iron industry. A million dollars worth of steel earmarked for use for the licensing office rice and road upgrades found in this compound around 9 a.m. on Tuesday. One scrap iron dealer has been named as the culprit and was detained by police. As the steel was found on his compound, Association President Alan Ferguson spoke to Guardian Media on the theft of the licensing authority's material. He said that his association met with the owners recently and granted them membership into his association. We were on Wednesday last week. First time we went because a new yard opened. We were on Wednesday last week and we will also tell them that we would like them to do because they were join our, join our association last Tuesday. And we would inform them what we're looking for them to do as a, as a yard in Trinidad and what we will appreciate them doing. All of this we have, we, we have, we tell them. He hinted that although foreigners are managing yards in the industry, there are others bent on breaking the law. Mr. Ferguson explained that the Ministry of Trade and Industry can solve this copper theft issue. There's a few amongst them that are doing this thing, you know. And that's why we ask the government how they get the license, how they're running a scrapyard. It's the thing that we have to get as local to get this crap. I don't want to know how they were able to get it. 
because I don't see that, and this is the problem. Them don't care what is CSCC wire. They don't care what is beans at new brandings. If it's six or seven people selling um, to um, exporting copper, the Ministry of Trade have all the names, you know. It's very easy to know who exporting copper. The latest incident comes as the industry is under the microscope as thieves are also targeting TSTT copper lines, affecting service. Ferguson confirmed that although his industry provides food for the poor, he's aware of the negative elements. Some of them laundering money in this industry, and that is why we, 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 so we propose a lot of things to humbug that, 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 that laundering money. And, and you see, you see, if you watch last week, when they come at me, it's because I go in the yard and telling them to stay in, and I try to stop this step. The Scrap Iron Dealers Association is also expected to start labeling trucks as another method of providing accountability for its members. Otto Carrington, CNC3 News. A Waller Field store attendant remains warded at the San Fernando General Hospital after being shot during a robbery this morning. Anim Singh suffered a gunshot wound to his chest while struggling with a masked bandit at his workplace in Princess Town. Surveillance footage showed the 34-year-old man standing behind the counter around 10.40 a.m. A bandit walked in and immediately pointed his gun at Singh. The gunman approached and snatched Singh's gold chain from around his neck. However, Singh tried to grab the bandit and was shot. Up to news time, police were unable to locate the suspect. An employee of Gate Boys Bar in St. Augustine is gunned down while working. 33-year-old Sherwin Julian, who lived at Watts Street Curap, was shot several times by two men who entered the establishment around 4.30 yesterday afternoon. The bar was filled with patrons at the time, but CNC3 News understands no cash or valuables were taken from anyone. The Arima District, recently named the number one district for serious crime in this country, is getting a new municipal police post. Arima Mayor Cagney Casimaya and members of Parliament Lisa Morris Julian and Penelope Beckles cut the ribbon on the new $600,000 building this morning. Mayor Casimaya says the police post will provide additional protection on the busy thoroughfare near Extra Foods. E-Tech Park and Massey Motors. It will also complement the Malabar police post. This was all done in house eh, by our staff, our construction staff. It came from uh, our own funding from unspent balances. It didn't it cost us about six hundred thousand uh, dollars. If it if it taken in, into that um, labor, it might cost us an additional two hundred. And because of it was built during the, during the pandemic. So because of the shortage and the increases in the price of uh, materials, that, that escalated the cost significantly, but it also, what it also did was prolong the construction period. One month ago, the Arima mayor met with Acting Police Commissioner McDonald Jacob to discuss the rising crime rate in the borough and surrounding areas. One of the promises made was to provide additional vehicles and patrols. So far, it appears the commissioner has kept his promise and 15 more officers will be assigned to the borough to assist. What I've seen is the addition in terms of the motorcycles that will come in to, the, to do the patrols within the uh, housing areas. I've also seen additional patrols and vehicles that come from the TGPS, and I've also seen the interceptors on the highways that we spoke, up, spoke about in terms of uh, making sure that there's a quick response to anything that happens within the, the, the borough. So yes, I've seen those things. The newly opened municipal police station will remain open 24-7. Is breastfeeding healthier for your baby or should you give them baby formula? Medical professionals say the natural way is always safer. Richard Kahn speaks with the head of the Health Ministry's breastfeeding unit as the world celebrates Breastfeeding Week. Wellness Wednesday, brought to you by BioStrand. Get what you need naturally. Almost all mammals breastfeed their young. And while us humans often turn to baby formula, the manager of the Health Ministry's Breastfeeding Coordinating Unit says it's not the best choice. In comparison, there's no comparison to breast milk, between breast milk and infant formula. She says that's because formula does not offer as dynamic benefits as the breast milk. 
To begin with, she says nursing benefits both the mother and the baby. According to the NHS, mothers who breastfeed have a lower risk of developing diseases like breast cancer, ovarian cancer, osteoporosis, cardiovascular disease, and obesity. In turn, their babies are less at risk for infections, diarrhea and vomiting, sudden infant death syndrome, obesity, and developing cardiovascular disease in adulthood. Apart from this, she says both can benefit from a stronger bond with each other. She says this is why it's recommended that babies be exclusively breastfed for the first six months of their life. She says unlike formula, breast milk can also adapt to suit the needs of the baby. There's a phenomenon with breast milk in that it changes daily to suit the growing needs and development of the baby. So what you had yesterday is not what is going to, you're going to have today. And unlike baby formula, she says breast milk is free and does not require a trip to the store to get. However, she says there are some challenges to the practice which needs to be ironed out to encourage more women to breastfeed. We need the public to get involved. We need a community response. We need employers to begin to, to establish the enabling environment. And that is simply a little room, not a toilet, not a closet. We mentioned have to go in a car with a breast pump to pump milk. But while breast milk is the best choice, she says there are certain medical conditions which make baby formula the best option. For this, she recommends mothers have a conversation with their doctors. She says the unit has been hard at work trying to raise awareness of the benefits of breastfeeding. She says it has published a guide for mothers which can be accessed at all health centers around the country. Rashad Khan, CNC3 News. Wellness Wednesday, brought to you by BioStrat. Get what you need naturally. The Trinidad and Tobago Defense Force is called out to assist as several areas were impacted by adverse weather today. Strong winds brought down trees and power lines in Mamoral, while hours of rainfall led to multiple roadways becoming impassable to vehicles, while residents braved the dangerous waters. According to the Office of Disaster Preparedness and Management, the Defense Force's engineering battalion has deployed a team to assist TNTech in getting a crew and equipment into the area. The Joint Trade Union Movement is tonight reminding the government that it has rejected the 4% salary wage increase offered to public sector workers. The statement from JTAM follows a new position expressed by the Chief Personal Officer to the Protective Services that 4% is the final offer from the government. However, speaking with CNC3 News, JTAM's General Secretary Ozzy Warwick says the union umbrella body reaffirms its rejection of the offer. He also says meetings are continuing with other unions and a statement will be made when a position is finalized. The Communication Workers Union and TSCT are before the industrial court this week as the union challenges a 2018 retrenchment exercise. The CWU argues TSCT did not engage in proper consultation with the union when the process took place. CWU Secretary General Clyde Elder was among those who were retrenched in that exercise. When the case really is to deal with the retrenchment of 2018, if you recall 500 workers were retrenched in 2018, myself included, we had challenged the, the company on that action and we have brought the matter to court and after much delays, the matter is finally being heard today. The senior counsel Douglas Mendez is leading the union's legal team. Acting Prisons Commissioner Deo Pasad Ramuta succeeds in his lawsuit to change the recruitment process for a senior rank within the prison service. Delivering a decision earlier today, High Court Judge Kevin Ramtran upheld Ramuta's lawsuit against the Public Service Commission, which was filed before he was given his acting appointment earlier this year. In the case, Ramuta was challenging the PSE's decision to introduce a competency-based interview for the rank of senior superintendent of prisons after he had topped the previous recruitment process and was awaiting retroactive promotion. He also claimed that he and his colleagues vying for the position were being assessed based on additional criteria and did not receive enough information to properly prepare. Justice Ramcharan ruled that the PSC's decision was irrational and unreasonable 
and issued an order quashing it. Welcome back to the 7 p.m. news. Agricultural economist Omar Dath Maharaj is not confident that local food systems are reliable for the future. Speaking to CNC3 News today, Maharaj says heightening tensions between the United States and China following the controversial visit of U.S. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi to Taiwan does not augur well for the Caribbean, which is heavily dependent on food imports. We in Trinidad and Tobago and even at the CARICOM level cannot immediately rely on our local food systems to satisfy the demand by 18 million people for the simple fact that the region imports about five to six billion US dollars in food every year. So I'm hoping that this agri-investment forum hosted in partnership by the CARICOM Secretariat and the government of Trinidad and Tobago delivers a regional contingency food plan. He says this regional food security plan must indicate the particulars of how the Caribbean plans to reduce food, feed, fuel, and fertilizer dependency. Well, as just we just heard, food, feed, and fertilizer shortages are of global concern at this time, and it's why the Trinidad and Tobago Chamber, the Supermarkets Association, and South X Promotions have collaborated to host the first annual Agricultural and Food Expo at the Gulf City Shopping Complex. The event comes as the region begins discussions on how to address these shortages. Our team of Radhika De Silva and Ivan Tulsi bring us more. Faced with the threat of food shortages, local government minister Faris al Rawi says Trinidad and Tobago is partnering with Guyana to achieve food sustainability. Speaking at the launch of the Food and Agriculture Expo held at the Gulf City Shopping Complex on Wednesday, Al Rawi says achieving food security and import substitution is no longer just a talk. The President of Guyana will be here on the 17th of August to ensure that the land space of Guyana is available to the whole of CARICOM. He urged more people to get into farming. Hydroponic and aquaponic specialist Deodath Ramjatan, also known as Planter Doctor, has taught agriculture to hundreds of people over the past 50 years. He says he too looks forward to the Guyanese partnership. When we get the initiative with Guyana, they use the rice hull and they use the um, sugarcane bagasse and making some uh, soil, organic soil, and putting it together, blocking it and sell it as a, a product to the farmers or householders so they can grow their food organically. But cocoa and coffee farmer Rennie Sarabjit, who has a booth at the Expo, believes more could be done to help farmers. The ministry, in my view, will have to take a more proactive approach. Uh, I think they are, they are to a certain extent. However, accessing some of these... Um, well, these, these, um, subsidies and so is a challenge. Um, I've known some farmers who would have a waiting on subsidies for a little while. And South X Promotion CEO George Singh says it is time for the Caribbean to find sustainable ways to grow its own food. Minister in the Ministry of Agriculture Avinash Singh says regional talks are underway to deal with feed, food and fertilizer shortages. Coming out of the visit that we would have accompanied the Honorable Prime Minister to Guyana, some of the talks that uh, took place at that forum was as um, uh, regional integration as well as Guyana making the land space available for um, our processors, our feed processors, to really get the raw material to be able to create feed. The expo has 40 booths and will end on Sunday with a farmer's market. Radically silver. CNC3 News. A committee is now in place to review the placement of statues, monuments, and other historical signage in TNT. A statement from the Office of the Prime Minister confirms that the committee will be chaired by Professor Bridget Brereton. The release says there is a need for issues associated with monuments to be studied and a decision to be made on what should be done with them. The committee has until December 31st, 2022 to report to the cabinet. Well, it's time to recap our headlines. Health officials on alert as COVID-19 hospitalizations are on the rise again.
Several samples sent for testing after suspected monkeypox cases in TNT all test negative. Well, that brings us to the end of the 7 p.m. news here on CNC3. Thank you so much for watching. Have a good night.